Occupaz is an organization that places fully trained guide dogs with those who are visually impaired. Today we've got volunteer here, Cheryl Hartung. So glad to see you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Well, of course, we always love to introduce your guest of honor. Yes. Let's talk about this. And this up. is Roxy. This is her second appearance on the program. She's a um, regular. So she's, yeah. <laughs> uh, and she's doing very nicely with just playing with this toy. So hopefully she'll just continue to do that. She's about five months old now. She's part of the R litter, as I mentioned, Roxy. Um, got a bunch of great dogs in that litter. Um, only one of the, the yellow labs, the rest of the, the black labs here. And... Um, so we're hoping she's going to be a rock star. Oh, I think so. <laughs> now, are you going, you have some more puppies? We did just days ago. Oh, Two more puppies born. Um, and both black labs, um, both female. So some raising opportunities come probably about mid-May. Absolutely. So there's lots of opportunities for folks. I know you need some help. We're asking all of our guests today to talk a little bit about coronavirus pandemic. And I know it is impacting local businesses, local organizations. How is this affecting Occupaz? Yeah, just in ways that you wouldn't even really think of until you investigated a little bit more. Um, it, it is actually impacting us a lot. Um, I would, first of all, we can't have classes um, because we can't put all those people together to have classes with the dogs. Um, so, you know, for our experienced raisers, that's probably not as, as much of an issue because they know what's going on. We always like to have new raisers and new raisers need some helpful hints on ways to handle these guys. Um, we also have a prison program, which is a huge part. Um, when the dogs get old enough, uh, they go to the program. And I always say it's a perfect marriage because these dogs need a lot of time and those guys have a lot of time. Um, but no one's going in or out of the prison system, so we can't get up there to train the prisoners to train the dogs. Um, and probably most importantly um, is the fundraising, because so much of that is um, craft and vendor fairs, or you know, it involves crowds and uh, people being able to meet and greet with dogs and, and other people who are interested in dogs. Um, so we really, uh, nobody knows. Um, how much that's going to be affected, when it's going to be uh, lifted and available again. So yeah, we're, we're definitely impacted by this yeah. the social distancing. Absolutely. And I know that folks are trying to reach out at this time and provide help to nonprofits, but there's also some uncertainty that's going around with people and finances. And so that can be challenging for some. Exactly. Uh, exactly. One of the ways that you raise funds, of course, is events. We'll talk about some coming up. Right? We're Fingers really not crossed. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to make sure to check the website to see if some of these are still going on, the, the soonest of which is April 5th and probably the most at risk for cancellation. But quickly tell us about that one. Right. That seems to be, at least with my kids in schools, that's the first cutoff date is, is April 5th. And that's the, one of the quarter auctions at the Waddle Inn in Lodi. Really popular, um, especially during the winter months um, when, you know, mostly you want to be in side. <laughs> yes. So hopefully that that will continue to be a regular event April 5th, Waddle Inn. Okay, and then uh, coming up on April 19th, there's another event. Getting a little bit farther away, and this is one of those craft and vendor fairs that I was talking about, and it's going to be at the uh, Prairie View Middle School in Sun Prairie, a, you know, 10 to 3 type of event, and hopefully we will be able to get people close enough together to be able to, to go to an event. But I know we have another one that's a little farther out into yes. June. And hopefully by June, um, we're returning to some sort of sense of normalcy. Um, and that's gonna be on the 14th. And um, that's gonna be at Haberman Park in Lodi. And it will be outdoors. Um, so <laughs> everyone's gonna be wanting to get out and about and be part of summer. And it's close to the pool that's there. So you can make it a family event and really make a day of it. Yeah, those sound like great events. I, you know, hoping for you that you can keep them on. Of course, keep, you'll keep us updated, I know. Quickly before we go to break, let, what do you do for Occupaz in the summer? Well, um, I prefer to do my raising during the summer, um, during the school year, um, and my oldest is a high school senior, so I can still say during the school year, um, and also with my college-age kids who come back during the summer, because I prefer to have all hands on deck. 
I refer to. So hopefully I'll be raising again this summer. Fantastic. Maybe some of those fresh ones we were just talking about. We'll yeah, see. We'll, we'll see, see what's some of those available. maybe on the show. That'll yeah. be fun. But do keep Occupy pause in your minds and in your plans uh, on April 5th, April 19th, and June 14th. If any of those events are canceled, you'll really be hurting for some support and some fundraising that is typically there. So please keep them in mind as you're giving during this pandemic. Thanks so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you. We'll be back with more Talk Wisconsin after the break.